So in the last couple weeks or so, my 13-year-old nephew wanted to make a knife. I let him use a billet of steel that I had laying around that was from uh, a bicycle. It was a canister Damascus billet, but he did most of the forging after that and forged it out to shape. I helped him with grinding on it, and I helped him with some of the finish work on the handle and so on, but he did quite a bit of it. Uh, but before I hand this sharpened knife back off to him, I want to go ahead and make a sheath of some sort for it to cover it, even though it's going to be probably mostly used as a kitchen knife. Even laying in a drawer, I want to have some sort of cover for it. Um, but we're going to go ahead and talk about knife sheath design too with this. And in particular, I'm going to make how you do different uh, belt loops to angle the knife differently. Now I've made a pattern already that's the basic shape of a knife sheath. And I do that all the time just by laying the knife down, tracing around it, rolling it over its spine, and tracing around it again, and then adding on a seam allowance, and making sure I have this wide enough at the top to wrap around the handle. And I usually go about halfway up the handle. All that can change and vary depending on exactly what you want to do. This doesn't have to be wide enough to wrap around. It can be narrower, it can be wider. But if it's like this, you can usually get it to pinch in right here and retain the knife um, in that where your first finger goes. Now, what this doesn't have on it is the belt loop. I could stitch this together just like this and just make a cover to put it in. Because like I said, it's a kitchen knife. It's just going to go in a drawer. This would work as a cover for the knife. Or you can add on a flat strap on the back. Now if you want the knife to hang vertical on a belt, you just use a straight strap with straight lines across it 90 degrees and the belt will go through at 90 degrees. If you want it to angle, you can add on a strap like this that is angled. And you can see the lines go like that so that the belt will lay through it at an angle. The other method is to add something on the top that's going to fold down. And you can do the same thing with it. It can be straight or it can angle either direction. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and trace this again. And we're going to want to add on, you need to add a bit for just where it folds. So when you fold a piece of leather, you fold it around. If you look, you've got only so far in there before, that you can fit a belt. And if you line up your fingers on either side of that and then lay it out, you can see that you have a pretty good gap there. That's three-eighths of an inch to half an inch between, and that's just what the fold is taking up. So if you made it just big enough for your belt and then folded it over, it actually would not be big enough for your belt because it has to have the thickness of the leather in there. So we're going to add on about a half inch for the fold, about two inches for the belt because you got the thickness of the belt, the width of the belt, the thickness of the belt again, and then about another half inch for where we're going to stitch it at the end. So the belt loop actually for an inch and a half belt needs to be about three inches long. And that's kind of at the minimum. We'll put a center line here. So we know about where our middle of our sheath is. Now then, you can just straight line right up there. And I want to go about, ooh, I don't know, three quarters of an inch on this sheath. I would normally make a belt loop wider, but this isn't a very wide knife, so you don't have a lot of room to play with here.
I'll just round that out a bit. And we'll round out these corners a bit. And that would be a straight belt loop. But what if we want to make an angled sheet in this case? Now, putting an angled loop on where it's actually part of the sheet and built in is a little bit more complicated than just adding on a chunk of leather that's going to fold down because when you fold it down it either sticks off to one side or the other um, so it's not on the back of the sheet anymore and you can't stitch it on so to do something like this and let's say we want it to fold um, with the spine of the knife being down. We're going to go ahead and mark the center line of our pattern, uh, which this other piece I already have a fold in it, so we're just going to go ahead and use it as our center, our approximate center. And then we know what we have to try and hit. somewhere in that area, preferably not into the stitching. So we want it to angle. We want to mark where we want our fold line first, is what I usually wind up doing. So let's say I want it to fold, we'll mark a dotted line out here. And we want it to be at that angle to the belt. This is about a quarter of an inch out or so to provide leather to fold over. And the same, this one is even more so out. Probably in this case, it looks like about five eighths. Yeah, about five eighths. But that can vary depending on the angle you put it at. So if it ran, you know, straight up and we fold it, it goes way out to the side. It goes straight out this way and we fold it. It doesn't go quite as far to the side. So it actually needs to go really far off this direction so that when we fold it around that fold line, let's do it with this piece, then it comes out a little bit closer to straight. So I should have drawn this on a different part of the paper um, if we wanted to fold this way. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's go ahead and change it to where it's going to be the edge of the knife down, which means we're going to take this side and run up 5 eighths of an inch or so, and this side will only run up about a quarter of an inch or so, and we're going to put our fold line across there. So now that's that I've reversed that, we're running into all the same problems, but again we can make it to where it folds further over that direction. And then it should line up. So we're going to go about 90 degrees to this and up about a quarter of an inch, about 90 degrees to it and up about the 5 eighths or so that I did on the other one. And now we should have that fold and we should be able to go straight off of that with our belt loop and hopefully come up with something that once it's folded fits. It really doesn't look like it's going to work. This is why I always like to do patterns out of paper first. Alright, so our fold line. And it lays right down the back of the sheath where it's supposed to be. Like I said, it does not look like it will work. It does not look right. Or it never does to me at least.
length of our belt loop. Again, we need at least two inches before we get to our stitching. We're going to go a little bit more. And it needs to angle just like this. So now we have a pattern for a knife sheath with an angled belt loop. Let's see how it turns out. I'm just going to do a basic basket weave pattern on this one. We're going to run across at an angle from really tricky. I'll get it close to parallel to the belt.
Okay, I've got this just a little wet on the inside so I could shape it and mold it to the knife a little bit. Also a good time to shape the loop. And I've got a chunk of scrap here that's about the size of a belt. So we'll go ahead and put that through there. And as you can see, it'll sit angled on a belt. I get it. Dry it off and let the sheath dry for a few hours and it'll be good to go.